Alaba. Hi, my name is Yusri. I'm from Luna Yeti, uh, which is a personal branding company. And recently, we finished making a 3D animated explainer video. It's an example project to see whether we could improve our personal branding services. And something that stumped us for ages with this particular video was the color management because we used Blender to create the animation and then we moved it to DaVinci Resolve to complete the video edit. And managing color from one software to another turned out to be quite a nightmare. So I hope to sort of explain how I figured out a solution and share that with you. So a quick explanation of color management is that it's the process of making sure that the colors of your artwork look exactly the same from uh, one application to another as well as to make sure that it looks exactly as you intended on your target platform. Without color management, you could design something in Blender and then take it to Resolve and find out that the colors don't match. You could do some fancy color grading and kind of make it look kind of the same. But then once you export it and put it onto another device like YouTube and then somebody watches it on the phone, it looks bad again. So color management is the whole process of managing these from one device to another to make sure that everything looks exactly the way it's supposed to look. But the thing is, it's kind of complicated and I don't think that within this video, I, I'm, I don't think I'm confident enough to explain all the little details about color management, but I can tell you how I solved the problem of taking um, something from Blender and putting it into Resolve and making sure that the colors matched. So in this video, we'll only be focusing on that. So let's get started. So here I am in Blender and first things first, I need to show you how I've exported the, uh, the, the shot. So this is shot number three of my animation and it's the shot where we have um, Newton kind of explain things on the board. I exported this along with all the other shots in this way. I go to the Composing tab, I enable this and I put a file output and the file output is set up in this way. So you can see the settings right here. Um, I send it out to a specific location. The file format is open EXR multi-layer. The color depth is half float. The codec is w DWAA lossy. Color management is overridden and replaced by Asus CG. So what's happening here is I use open EXR because that's the file type that will retain the most amount of data. And um, it's generally a better format to render in. I, I put half float because I don't use, I don't need full float for this kind of animation. Uh, the codec is DWAA to save on space because even though it will slightly compress the fi files, it will save a lot of space and it's imperceptible in terms of quality. The color management is overridden because I need to use Asus CG, which is a wider color space and allows me to more easily transfer um, uh, an image from Blender to another software like Resolve that can understand the Asus color spaces. Okay, so now when we switch over to Resolve, you can you can start you'll begin to see the difference between these two and how it looks. Okay, so let's switch over to Resolve right now. So here we are in Resolve, and I have my shot three right here. And I just drag it into the timeline and you can immediately see things don't look correct. They look completely, everything looks dark. Things are looking bad. Um, and what's the problem? The problem is that in Resolve, does not uh, Resolve doesn't understand that this is an Asus CG color space. It's trying to, it thinks that this is a um, Rec. 709 color space. So we need to inform Resolve how, how to handle this. And there's a way to do this in Resolve. It's built in, it's called color management, uh, um, like a color management solution. And when, when you go to the project settings, you can check under color management. There is a option called color science. You can switch from Des Re da, da Vinci YRGB to Asus CC, okay? When I switch from this, I wanna make sure that my input color space is Asus CG right here and my output transform is either sRGB or X709 or something like that, something that I can understand. So let's choose X709, okay? Save. 
Now it looks much better. It almost looks correct, but if we look at it side by side, it won't look right. And I'll show you that right now. Here we are side by side. Blender on this side, Resolve on this side, and you can you can probably see the difference. There is a difference. If I zoom in right here, you can see that this sort of highlight near this board is much lighter than the highlight um, on this side. This is much more saturated. It's much more yellow. It's a warmer tone. The hair is warmer on this side. So what exactly is going on? To understand what's going on, you need to understand that in Blender, we have an additional effect called the view transform. And I can show you that in Blender. If we switch over to Blender right now, over here in the Blender's render settings at the bottom of color management, we have this something called view transform and we're using an AGX view transform. Unfortunately, we do not have this kind of view transform in Resolve. It's, it doesn't exist. So we need to find a way to handle that kind of um, view transform or add those new tra view transforms into Resolve. How do we do that? So if you can't use ACES color management in Resolve the way it's supposed to be used, how do we handle this problem? I spent a lot of time Googling solutions and I eventually found a particular solution from a YouTuber named Robin Squares and you can check his YouTube out. It's pretty advanced and very interesting. But he gave this solution in the middle of one of his videos and I realized, okay, this is the only realistic way we can handle this. So let's look at that solution. Well, first of all, we can't use color management. We just have to disable it. Uh, to use the method I'm about to show you, we have to disable this. So let's disable this and we're back to this horrible looking image, but we'll fix it. To fix it, we need to switch over to Fusion. So let's click on this, let's select this shot and go to Fusion. Fusion is this little button over here and we're in here and we're in Fusion. I'm just going to collapse all this so it's easier to see. Um, okay. And we need to add a node, which I'm going to add by pressing control space. And I'm going to type in OCIO and I get three nodes. One of them is called OCIO color space. That's the one we want. OCIO is like this open standard for managing color space transforms across multiple devices. So this is the solution to this problem because Blender has its own methods of managing color and Resolve has its own and they're not incompatible with each other. So you can make them compatible by using OCIO and a configuration file provided by OCIO. So how do we do this? So we just connect this up. We drag this in here and drag this in there and nothing happens because we're not actually doing anything. We need to set up a configuration file first. We need to load up a configuration file. So let's find this configuration file find it, you have to navigate to Blender's install folder. So if I click browse and I go to where I save Blender, which is my pro my drive program files, Blender Foundation, Blender 4.1, 4.1, data files, color management. And over here I have this file called config.ocio. I want to click that and click open. Once I do that, I've loaded a OCIO config file from Blender. So that's now I have all Blender's view transforms and color spaces inside of Resolve. Now I need to declare what is the source space. The source space is the one I exported uh, this image from. If you remember, we exported it in ASUS CG. So this should be ASUS CG. Okay. Now for the output color space, what I want to do is I want to select a the AGX, one of the AGX options, there's a bunch of options. I'm going to select AGX base Rec 2020. This is very similar to Rec 709, but it includes uh, higher dynamic range values. So here we are. This is now looking much closer to what we had before. This is the only realistic way of sort of matching Blender and Resolve because you're now using the same color space transforms that exist in Resolve, uh, in Blender, in Resolve. Does that make sense? Let's compare things side by side, okay? Um, 
okay so let's just let's just compare side by side you can see it's almost identical this one looks a little bit different but it's almost the same thing a lot of the difference is mainly due to the fact that this is rendered in 1080p and this is uh, not yet rendered so we can see all the tiny details but here things are kind of reduced uh, because of the because once we render it out things kind of reduce if if we were to render out in a higher resolution it should look identical okay so that's it and that's it that's the that's the solution uh, this is the only method that i've found that ensures color matching from blender to resolve if you know of a better way you can let me know um, hopefully in the future resolve will become a member of ocio it is not currently and they'll be able to implement it natively in their software uh, with their own config files and make things a little bit more seamless so I hope this video helped you. I struggled with this for days. Maybe now you don't have to struggle like I did. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you like this video and you found it helpful, consider giving it a like. If you want to watch more videos like this, consider subscribing because we will be uploading other videos like this. Um, okay, bye. Bye for now.